<laughs> the face. Hi, Pumpkin. Good morning. How you doing, Pumpkin? I know. Gloomy day. Very gloomy. Look at all the gloom. So much gloom. No sun. Which actually isn't a bad thing. Just interesting timing. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. I've got a lot of work to do today. I've got all these palm trees outside. Big ones that are going off to their storage facility for the winter time. Can we see the Miami planters from here? Kinda. Oh, so pretty. They're being picked up tomorrow, which means, can I get, would you mind if I, can, Toby, can, thank you. So many animals. It's amazing how long it takes to walk 10 feet when you've got dogs everywhere. As I was saying, the palm trees. Gotta get them ready to go. Time to prep them for pickup. <sighs> Oh, I hope that wasn't too loud. You should try and not shut the door. When I have the camera rolling, I need to get my brain together. It's very early. Oh my gosh, it's cold too. 47. 47 degrees. And it's so dark. I need to turn the brightness up on this thing. I can't see anything. Oh, it just did it. It's like it heard me. So yeah, see all the palm trees and the very sad heliconias? I need to water, but it's also cold. Not entirely certain what I'm going to do there. I'll give them a drink, but not right now. The palms, they did really well this year. I'm going to miss them, but it's all right. They'll be back in a few months. I'm going to come through with some tarps and have to lift these guys out of their decorative containers and be very gentle <laughs> with the ones that I want to keep and uh, get those repotted and pot up the Adenidia palms down there. They need to go into new containers. The Gossia palms, they're already in some pretty nice nursery containers. They're really thick, heavy duty ones. I'm still gonna have to lay these on their side, yank them out. It's gonna be extremely messy. So I need to find the tarps before I start messing with anything like that. And then uh, the big challenge, I mean, this isn't, this stuff isn't gonna be all that pleasant to do just cause it's gonna be really messy. And I really just hope I have enough potting soil to get the two Adenidias down there put into new containers. But uh, I also, I need to get, I gotta get this out of here. The Adenidia palm, it's way back in there. Got a lot of plants sitting in front of it. They're little, so it won't be that hard to move. It's just going to be um, interesting to say the least, trying to pull that out. And then just for anybody who's new or doesn't know, the reason that I pull these out and send them back inside of plastic containers is because uh, this company who comes and stores the palm trees for the winter, they don't guarantee the pottery. So if they break it, too bad. And these things are very expensive, especially those Miami planters down there, those really tall blue ones. Uh, that's a risk I'm not gonna take. I see how these things get tossed around <laughs> on their trucks and on the crane. We'll only ever send away things that are in flexible plastic. And then I guess I also should maybe talk about how I just got really distracted. Where did all the leaves go on the neighbor's tree? It's fall, but it's not that fall. What happened? I'm just gonna assume that's something to do with the drought. That's really weird. Is there some color on the tree behind it? Oh, there is. It's like fall just happened out of nowhere. Everything was, I thought, pretty green yesterday. But anyways, what was I saying? Oh, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, another thing that I should give some background on. I'm in 6B, 7A. St. Louis, so all these palm trees, they don't stay out here, right? There's just, there's no way. It's too cold for these species anyways. And I'm lucky enough to have a company here that will come and pick them up and they store them for the winter time. And in the spring, they bring them back. So that's all that's going on here. Just gotta get the plants ready to go back into their winter storage. Hi, baby Toby, it's so nice to see you. So good to have him outside. And uh, I think the first thing to do, now that I've briefed everybody on everything, need to find a tarp. Oh man, it's gonna look so weird over here with all these palm trees being gone, right? The only palm tree that's staying over here is the woodmill, and I'll be moving that. Not, I don't know if I'll be doing that in this video. I really wanna focus just on getting the palm trees ready to go and everything. The whole process of rearranging and setting things back up again. Uh, I don't know. I think that might be something for another time. Yeah, need rain. Need some rain. Things are looking okay over here. Okay, tarp. Yes, thank goodness. I wasn't sure if this is where the tarps were. I'm glad that this is them. I don't want to use this. It was a nice thick one. I think this is the one I used to cover the fountain in the winter time. Good to know 
Always want to know where that thing is. I've been debating sending the Croton off to storage. It's nice to have around. I enjoy looking at it in the garage, in the grow space during the winter time. But it is getting really, really big. I also, you know, sometimes they kill plants and I would just, I would be more devastated if that thing died with them than any of the palm trees. I've had it for such a long time. Y'all know how slow crotons grow in containers. Are we gonna, you gotta, turbo, <laughs> move, thank you. Trying to narrow down where to start. I would like to do the suckiest thing first and then move on to the next sucky thing and then end with the least sucky thing. But I don't know on a scale of one to sucks, these all suck. I don't want to do any of these things. <laughs> it's just that Adenidia planters where I need to mix up some soil. It's going to take me some more time, whereas with these I can just pull them and be done. I would it'd be kind of nice to start off with just having done something, right? Got something done. I'm going to move these guys. And I think where I'm going to put them, because it's supposed to be getting kind of cold, is over here, closer to this hop tub wall because this is also the path of the sprinkler. The sprinkler, okay, thanks, Toby. Thank you for pooping right where I need to set my tarp. Thanks, bud. It's okay, he's old, he can't help it. It just kind of falls out of him at this point. He doesn't have much control over it. Uh, what I was saying is <laughs> the sprinkler's over here so I can run that and rehydrate everything. You have mealybugs on you, huh? All right, well, that's just gonna go to the trash, Never mind. Well. No, maybe I'll let you live another day. It's not that bad. I should be able to spray for it. I'm not seeing them on the leaves. The sprinkler, we're supposed to have some frost tonight, a light frost. I don't think that we'll actually have any where I am. They're saying 37 degrees, which, you know, that shouldn't be too bad. The so pool's heated too, and that helps keep things fairly warm back here. That and the ground's still warm. So I would be surprised, but just in case, I have the sprinkler set here, so if I look at my phone in the middle of the night, I have a sensor out here that will alert me if temperatures drop below 35. And then I can come out, turn the sprinkler, have it do a 360 on a basically a low pressure, just don't dial it up all the way. And having that water hitting things will help keep the frost off of them. To get this out of the way, it's the iguana's winter habitat, working on getting that set up. And uh, yeah. I think we're good to go, except there's a fresh pile of dog poop right in front of a pot and clean up, but handle that. <laughs> Let the dogs run around for a while so I can put them back inside because I can tell they're gonna be in the way and I don't want anybody to get hurt. These containers are really big. I'm gonna start pulling things. I'm so sad, can't believe it's already time for them to go. They weren't here very long. They didn't get delivered until, what, sometime into June <laughs> this year. So that's part of the reason that it feels like it's so short or was such a short season because well, it was. I didn't get these things planted up until July, and usually I'd like to have them planted up by June. You know, they get delivered in May, and I like to have everything done with them. Oh, yeah, well, it's been nice. <sighs> okay, ADD is strong today because <laughs> I had coffee. I don't drink coffee that often anymore. That's okay. Some people, y'all seem to enjoy the ADD chaos videos. Sometimes they're entertaining other people. It drives you crazy, and you click off. Do you, it's fine. So, I gathered the tarp, cleaned up the dog poop and all that stuff. Then I started getting my supplies together for when I want to uh, repot the Edenidias that are down there. Pulled the bird of paradise out, it was back there in the shade and thought I should bring it all over so you can have a nice look at it. It's done a lot of growing. I didn't give it the attention it deserves this year. I mean, I took care of it, I mean, to the camera. Y'all didn't get good looks at it because it was kind of tucked back there. It provided so much privacy from the neighbor's house. We need to go get some shrubs and plant those in place of where this was sitting. I sprayed this down with some Neem Max because it just, it looked kind of crummy. Is that the right word? <laughs> there was a little bit of dust that looked like it was probably from spider mites. So went in and sprayed it down. I do like to give the plants a spritz with some neem before I send them off just to be considerate. And uh, I don't expect them to spray them if they go off to the greenhouses with some sort of insect or disease on them, like a fungus. So I may as well give them their last spray. I also went through and spread some pea gravel in here that's been sitting here for like three months, but it just needed to be done. I have a path I'm gonna put over all this. I'm trying to get it raised up because when it rains really heavily, the water comes up, pools up this back area, floods over here and turns the pool brown. I have all this soil in this container and I'm going to dump that over. I don't, 
we didn't even talk about this yet. But that was the whole process was I was over here and I was like, oh, I need to do that. And then I need to do that. Cause I was just gathering things that needed to be taken to the dumpster. So what I'm saying is I'm done prepping and now I'm ready to get to work. I also spritzed the Roblini palm cause it's always had mealybugs on it. Went ahead and hit the heliconias that are hanging on death's door. But you know, it's cause it got cold last night and uh, they're pretty dry too. I don't want to water them when they're this cold. I don't want to water them when it's this cold. There we go. That's what I was trying to say. And uh, I don't want to move them into the garage when there are mealybugs on them, at least on that one. So gave it a heavy spray, gonna let those sit for a while. And then this evening, I will probably move those in or tuck them back into the landscaping. Now, the Gossia palms. These did so well this year. I didn't get a ton of growth out of the annuals down in here, but that's all right. They didn't get planted up until fairly late in the season either, so wasn't expecting much. I do not want to lose this beach ball. I've had this beach ball for years. It's a miracle that I haven't lost it yet. I need to make sure that I'm mindful about where I put that so I still have it out here next year. But for right now, I will put it in there. Is that it? I thought there was more insight here. Got a coconut. Need to put that away so that Turbo can't get to it. I really thought there was more inside the spot. But you, do you have more in here? Got the sand castle, little beach chair, some seashells. Huh. Could have sworn I had all kinds of little beach balls and coconuts in those pots. I love these sand castles. They've held up so well. Am I pushing it? Do I need to like maybe wash these off and then cover them with a resin or something? before they start falling apart, or they're actually starting to fall apart now. I should probably do that sometime. No nuts? No coconuts? Okay, I thought I had some little coconuts in there. Get that last solar light out, and then gotta tip them over. That wasn't too bad. A little risky, something else I guess I should have mentioned. I don't know if anybody cares. But uh, I did stop watering three days ago to dry these guys out. It's sort of a catch-22 because I don't want them being hauled around on a truck and moved around a ton when they're dehydrated and thirsty. That makes them more brittle. But as a safety thing for moving them around and having them not be as heavy, it just seems smart to let them dry out some. It's only been three days. Today is the third day. So two days since I've given them a heavy watering and it hasn't been terribly warm out. It's, I think, just enough to get the soil fairly dry down below but not enough that it should be desiccating anything. Are you gonna come out easily? Oh, oh, nice. I was not expecting that. Sometimes getting the palms out of these big blue pots can be a nightmare. That sucker pulled right out. That's great, kind of. <laughs> the only reason that they become tricky to get out is because they grow so vigorously that the roots extend down into the bottom of the pot. But, uh, well, they didn't do that, so I guess that means they didn't do a ton of growing as far as roots are concerned, but hey, we got a lot going on up here. They're Gossia palms. These aren't meant to get that big very quickly. I was actually looking at pictures. I don't know if it was on my computer or phone or where I saw them. I think I took a screenshot of it from when, uh, I think either when these were first delivered or when I was packing them up last year. They really have done a good amount of growing. Looking a lot nicer. I can't wait to see what, the, well, <laughs> what they're going to look like when they come back. It, they'll look like this, except most of the fronds will be brown and decrepit, and I'll just be waiting for them to push out new fronds. It's not going to be much of a change. Okay, second one's done. Got the other one hauled off down to the collection zone. I did just realize something. Should I pull the Roeos? They're really easy to overwinter. It's just space is so limited. Maybe I'll just pull it and then think about it. There's, they're okay, like they don't, you don't need to do much with them. Really, that's it. If I just set that into a pot, they'll probably make it through the entire winter like that. For right now, just gonna set that down in there. There you go. This one slid out of there so easy, it's like butter, just right out. Love it. Okay, sucky thing number one, done. And it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad at all. Get that out of the way. Now, with the Miami planters. What do I want to keep? I don't think I want to keep the begonias. So those are relatively inexpensive. Definitely want to hold on to the Fridex. I'm going to overwinter those here. May as well pull the bromeliads out too. So there's two Fridex, two bromeliads. Is that it? I could hold on to the chrysandras. I really like them. 
there will be a video that came out right before this one about how easy they are to overwinter. It's just a space thing. Do I really feel like trying to make the space for them when I would like to have more room in the growth space this year? Uh, I don't think I do. So, what is that? Four? I need to go find four small containers and then get these guys out. I have a feeling these... <laughs> maybe it's going to be like with the other ones. Maybe it won't be that bad. I have a feeling they're going to be kind of tricky to get out of these pots because they were difficult to get into these pots. I had to do some root pruning on them. They didn't go in all that easily. So, oh, I need to find pots to put the Adnidias in. I have one right there. need to go find another one. Hey, that one came up with a little piece of Lismachia in it. That's convenient. I brought the Gorilla Cart over because I was thinking maybe I would just pull the Adnidias, set them in the Gorilla Cart, and then get them repotted in the driveway. It'd be less messy. But, or it's just going to make a trail of dirt that goes all the way over to the driveway. I haven't figured that out yet. Ah, uh, so sad. So sad seeing all that stuff torn up, but it's what it is. Got the first fry deck up, came up pretty smoothly. As far as everything else goes in these, I've just been going through and just, you know, snapping them out. Nothing special. Trying to get some roots on the ones that will let me pull up roots, and then setting this stuff on the wall and breaking it up and tossing it into the landscape. Good for the garden. No reason to do anything else with it, right? The impatience, they pull right up, right? I mean, you just wrap your hand around them like so and just give them a tug and boom. Done with the impatience and trying to remember to shut those drip heads down. Don't need those running. Not until I get these replanted up with something for the winter time. And for the fried eggs, really should be using a fork for this, but just with the other one, went in, got my fingers down as low as I could around the little bulblet and pulled the whole thing up. Not ideal, but didn't have to bring out a special tool. Got the job done. Tried to make sure I had some soil in here for them. It's not a ton, but I don't really need a lot. And I'm thinking I'm probably not going to be keeping the fried eggs outside for the rest of the year. I think it would be smart to go ahead and move these on into the grow space and get the grow lights and things turned back on for them. I know that's a sloppy repot, but you saw the amount of roots on that thing, right? It doesn't need that entire container. I think that'd be too much water for it. All right, now just got to get the rest of the stuff out. Take a stab at getting the palm trees out of these pots. It might be tricky. Yeah, tarp it is. <laughs> They're not coming out. These planters, it's hard to tell on camera. I think they're 42 inches tall. I just can't get the leverage to lift them out. They're weighted down with um, cinder blocks and some really old weights. I think there's like some uh, 20 pound and 25 pound actual like iron weights in the bottoms of these things. So uh, yeah, I can't, I just can't do it. I'm gonna try and lay them down. I just hate doing this. It's so nerve wracking because you know, because you could break them. I don't want to break them. Those are really in there, or this is really in there. I haven't gotten to that one yet, but I would assume same situation. I'm taking the root slayer shovel and just trying to wedge it in there and slowly pry. You can kind of see the root ball moving. I just need to get it loose. If I can get it loose, then I can pull it out, but I don't know. I'm going to keep working on this for a while, but I'm starting to get concerned that I might have to just move these inside for the winter and store myself in the grow space, which would not be ideal. I despise <laughs> keeping Ed and Idias in the grow space. They're spider mite magnets. Not fun to keep inside. Look how healthy this one is. Look at how thick and full that trunk got on this. Remember just last year there was only like maybe six inches of clear trunk on it. Did a good amount of growing. They both did. <sighs> okay. Not to brag or anything, but I managed to pull that off in only like 45 minutes. Holy crap, that was rooted in there. Really rooted in there. I think that what happened is that the root ball wrapped around a cinder block that was inside that container. So everything was just really wedged in there. So it was just rocking it back and forth very slowly, like getting out maybe half an inch at a time until I got to right around here and then it popped out. All right, that's done. Now let's do it again. Okay, that one wasn't quite as bad. That's a juniper set back up the Miami planters, not potted into them, just sitting. I think this one's dead. 
or about to die. Really not looking great, but I don't know, got the drip on it. Let's see what happens, you know, the drought just does that to things sometimes. The other one looks okay. I think it was more in line with the sprinklers. <sighs> Neither here nor there. Okay, now, oh my gosh, my hands are shaking. <laughs> it was a long time I was gripping all those trunks and pulling. Not that tired, it's just it's a lot of work on the hand. Um, I can, I'll go ahead and take like a five minute break. I need to start getting these guys moving through new containers. I think I'm gonna have to take a root saw, root pruner to them and cut the bottom stuff off to make them fit. And that's okay, I've pruned on these things on their roots so many times, they don't seem to care. Hasn't set them back one bit. You can see like this is probably the line right about here on there and I'll just take the saw and go shoop. Make a nice clean cut. Put them in their new pots. Okay, I've recharged. Got my battery here. I'm gonna take this over. Try and get some cut and look at my saw blade. That's not how that's supposed to look. It's fine, just cutting through some roots. Doesn't need to be all that sturdy for what I'm doing right now. I know there are people who are gonna be so upset and be so mad that I did that, but trust me, it's okay. They don't mind that much. The adenidias are pretty tough and I didn't have to take off that much root anyways. I have another container that matches this one, but doesn't have any drainage holes, so I'm gonna just <laughs> Pop a few, <laughs> pop, a, pop a few drainage holes. That's what I was saying. Needed holes in the bottom. I guess I just had these sitting around from when I used to, I think I used to have lotus plants in these. I have three of them in the garage that don't have holes in the bottom. Must have been from when I was doing some water garden stuff back in the day when the backyard had enough sun for water lilies and lotus plants. I gotta get those floats out of the pool. They're really loud. Also, this gorilla cart, the tires on this thing, it's supposed to do 800 pounds. It, that's, that's a lie, total lie. Okay, there we go. Sucky thing one and sucky thing two, done. Aw, that looks so cute over there. Love those palm trees. That took so much longer than I expected it to. <laughs> and I'm sure I'll do it again next year. I'll be saying, hey, don't put these in that pot. Those Miami planters, they don't fit. Because these are wider than the Miami planters. Clearly not as deep though, right? So I end up having to do the root prune on the edge when they show up in the spring and then do the root prune on the bottom when they go away in the fall. They don't seem to mind. They're actually making for some nice thick trunked edonidias. These are looking really good, really nice form to them. You know, they tend to get kind of scrawny when you're growing them outside of their humidity zone. Not that there's a humidity zone, but I think you know what I mean. <laughs> Did I just sniffle without pausing? I'm sorry, that's gross. I shouldn't sniffle while I'm filming. All that's left to do is just clear things out. Like I just need to move plants and make a path so that they can get the stuff out. Oh, I love these berry whites. Anyone else think that it looks weird without having plants over here? I kind of do. I also think that it wouldn't look that bad if I were to just take these planters and scoot them to the edge of the patio for the winter time. I don't know, something about this new color that I don't like because it's way too bright and shows every speck of dirt. It does look nice when it's open. I have some arbs, <laughs> you can't see them down there, that I put in these containers during the fall and winter time and spring. And then I just pull them out and move them back over there when the Gossia palms show up. So. I could bring those out and put them in these pots, but uh, it's not really bugging me. Having them empty would bug me, but moving them might be okay. I need to get these out of the way. Oh, I could take the berry whites just for right now, just, you know, for a moment and probably get two of these in each one of these, just they're out of the way. That is very low. Uh, I got very, very distracted by that airplane. That was kind of cool. Loud, but pretty neat. This at least gives me a place to have these set while these other things are being moved around. Okay, I mean, that does look dumb, right? But it's fine. It's temporary. This guy got pretty wonky. It was over on its side. Look at that curve and those stems. That's okay. They'll straighten out. Pulled the furniture out of the way. There was a stromanthi over here. 
the Chinese fan palm. The Chinese fan palm had scale and mealybug, so it's gone. Toss that into the yard waste. Yeah, that's the thing with these big palm trees is that they go off to the greenhouse where they're surrounded by, you know, hundreds, not thousands of other plants, and they always come back with pests on them. So I've learned that when it comes to what I have underneath these, it's smart for me to not try and keep them in the grow space with my other plants and to make sure that everything gets sprayed off really well. So there's only so much you can do, right? You just have to be careful. I don't want to take plants from over there and scoot them over into a pile with other plants and find out that now I've just spread some kind of pest around. So I'm trying to keep things somewhat contained over here. That should be, I think that's enough space. Might need to move this table, but pull this out and bring it around. I'm not going to do that. I'll allow them to do that. Take this, we'll set it somewhere else. Not entirely sure why I ended up all the way over here with it, but it's just where my body took me. I think I'm also gonna have to move the table just, you know, over several feet because this queen palm's gotta come out. They're gonna need some space to move. And they're, I was gonna say I need to clean up in front. There's only like three plants in front of it and they're all really small. Pulled the adenidia out from the corner here. <laughs> I just have to get through the obstacle of hose. Like how I realized, oh, I need to move the table and then set things on the side of the table. I'm gonna have to move again. Got these guys pulled out. I didn't even realize how much this Robolini's grown. Look at all the trunk this thing has on it. I think I got this like, I don't even know, maybe six, seven years ago perhaps, and it had maybe three and a half feet of clear trunk on it. Getting a good size considering it's in a pot and it's not the healthiest of Robolini palms. Like genetically, I think there's just something wrong with this one. I've grown a lot of Robolinis and this one has always been a problem child. I don't know what the deal is with it, but hey, it's still doing okay and looking decent considering it's a problem child. And then there's this at a nitty over here that I do not care about at all. I may not have them bring that back in the spring. I might just do a credit and say, would you just keep it? Because I just think it's really wimpy and pathetic and I don't need it out here. It's just something else to take care of. Okay, so what's left? I suppose I need to move the plants that are in front of this Edenidia that's by the door. I did decide though that I think, and I may have already said this, I'm gonna let them get that out of there. I'm gonna clear this path for them and everything, but I just think it'd be better to have multiple people working on it. I will help them, of course. I'm not just gonna be like, hey, you guys do this. And if they need my help, I'm here. I'm gonna work on it with them, but I just feel like I'm really gonna potentially just do something wrong trying to get it out of that spot. So just clearing it out, I think is the best thing that I can do for right now. And, and I probably need to cut these gingers back, right? Yeah, I don't see how that's gonna work. I don't even remember all the stuff that's over here at this point had plants piled up all over the place which looked really nice you know everything i think came together very nicely <laughs> am i out of words apparently i'm out of words you can see though how like it's that time of year where things just aren't looking great anymore and it would really be best to <laughs> come here and get things out like i completely forgot i forgot there was even a bromeliad back here because everything grew up so much that I totally lost sight of this. And I know this is not the way to be picking it up. I know, I know, I know, I know. Not perfect, but it worked. It's tough. Nice, strong, weathery leaves on that one. Get out of here too. This heliconia never really did great. Do a pest check. Don't want to go pile it up with the other plants if there's bugs on it. I think it's all right. None of the heliconias are gonna be looking good right now because uh, what's well, that time of year? Temperatures have cooled down quite a bit. So they just look really crappy because they don't like it when things are cool outside. Hey, coconut did well over here. Some nice roots on it. Not the most ideal time of year for that sort of thing because we need to repot it. Pest wise, eh, I'm gonna give it a spritz. Can't tell if that's dust or if it's something to be worried about. Everything out here is gonna be getting sprayed before they go inside. In fact, the cordolins these over here, the Fredicasas, I've talked about how I was debating whether or not to even move them in just because they're such pest magnets and it's so hard to really get the bugs off of them. But I was thinking, what if I got one of those pop-up, like, you know, six foot by four foot greenhouses, the really cheap ones, and kept those and the really prone to bugs 
plants in those for a few weeks and just bug bombed them. That might do the trick. Eh, just a thought. We will see. Now, I have to decide. Do I want to go ahead and try and pull this out on my own? Or wait for them to do it? I just feel bad. Like, I feel like I should do it. But it is their job. It's what they do. It's a landscaping company where they go around and they do stuff like this. But I feel bad. I don't like when people have to do things for me. Uh, I can't do it. I have to try. <laughs> it's just like, I'm not built that way. I made the mess. I need to clean it up myself. And uh, I'm really happy with my decision to give these guys a couple days to dry off because it's actually surprisingly not too heavy. It's more just that this thing, it comes out and it has that curve to it. So the plants don't want to come out. I also figured that by doing this myself, the gingers, they'll be a little bit more protected because when they show up tomorrow, and I, I would just tell them, like, just rip it through. Don't worry about the plants. The plants will be fine. You know, they'll break. It's no big deal. Which is true, but I would prefer they not get too trampled because, yeah, we're going to have a few cold days here. It's supposed to be cold tonight and cold tomorrow. Then, for all I know, it might be nice until mid-December, I think is what it was last year. Maybe it's a few more cold snaps here and there. And these things are still blooming and doing their thing. Or, you know, in two weeks, we could have like three inches of snow on the ground and ice storms. You just never know here. But uh, just to be safe, figured I'd give it a shot myself. That thing's really in there. It's just it's this part. If that was straight, I could pull it right out. But I wanted it this way. I think it looks nice having it follow the curve of the patio. It just presents a problem. What's really going to be a problem is when I try and get the windmill palm over there, which I'm on the fence about doing. I might just wait until next spring to even attempt that because it just got repotted and I feel like in order to actually get it into the spot, I'm going to have to lay it down like I did with this one. That's really the only way to get it in here and then lift it back up and it's not all the way rooted into its container. So that might be a setback for the plant. I'm really deviating here, aren't I? Oh look, there was a little inflorescence getting ready to pop out there. Oops, <laughs> that's my bad. I pulled the the sheath off because it was all yellow and gross looking. It was starting to get crispy. Oh well, it's fine. These things, they bloom when they're in the greenhouse. I never get to see it anyways. Sheesh, how the heck was that easier than unpotting those two little dinky adenidias on the other side? That wasn't that bad. See, you know, sometimes you think something's really gonna suck and you just do it. It turns out it's not that bad. All right, just need to clear a path over here. And then I really need to get this thing set up with the iguana in tonight. Maybe even this afternoon because it's not that warm out. And this, I don't, I mean, I just kind of scoot stuff around. Not much to say about it, just got to move things. Clear a path. Get all the pots and things out of the way so they have some way to, some way, somewhere to work. Okay. Got that done. That's actually been bugging me for a long time. Nice thing about all this is that this is opening things up because I need to come in and pressure wash and power wash and then waiting to do that. So I knew that the palm trees were gonna be going back to storage here not too long and it would make a big mess. So I needed to move the table anyways. May have to move it some more, but I'll let them decide about that because I figured they're also going to need, I figured they're also gonna need room to get the queen palm out of here too. So you have to lay it back and twist it and spin it and everything. So I don't wanna move this too much because then that would be in everyone's way. Yeah, I think that's it. This is it, time to say goodbye. See these in the springtime. Have another look at the Alexander Palm. <laughs> Could you hear my tongue detaching from my brain as I was saying that? The Alexander Palm never gets enough attention, but thought I should, so thought I should let it have a little bit of screen time here before it grows. I may film them taking the plants away. I have no idea. All I know is that my ass is tired. I've been doing a lot lately. I only have 28 videos left to film. My goal was 68 by November 1st, so we're doing it. So getting things done. Gonna be a pleasant winter, not having to come up with content all winter long, can just vlog and have fun in the grow space. I know, changing subjects all the time. That's the caffeine. I am gonna miss them. It's been nice having them out here, but it's also gonna be nice getting everything off the patio and being able to clean things up and rearrange things, get the setup going for how I want things to look this winter, which like I said, I don't think I'm gonna be doing that in this video, but next week we'll have plenty of time to do that and probably run to a nursery because it looks like that juniper's dead. <laughs> See if I can find some evergreens to put into some planters out here. 
Uh, I'm really happy there's clouds in the sky. It's been so hazy and gross the last several weeks. It's a really beautiful day, kind of chilly, but still very beautiful. Hopefully tomorrow will be nice too. I know it's gonna be cold, but at least hopefully the sky isn't all gross and hazy. That's a weird looking cloud hole. I don't like it. Hey Turbo, what you doing Turbo? You having a good morning? I was really paranoid. I came out here to the car and thought that this was frost. Walked around the garden, saw what maybe was frost. I'm pretty sure it was just dew. Made it through the night. Don't think there was any frost. And now I'm just moving the car because you know, semi trucks and things. Why are you beeping at me? It thinks I'm gonna hit the dumpster, so that's why. Yeah, uh, we can go have a look at everything. I think it's okay. Doesn't look like it got too terribly cold, like 36, 37 maybe? Eh, I'd say everything's fine. Walked around, not seeing any frost or frost damage. The sensors out here, just <laughs> perfect timing, stopped working. Well, one of them is kind of working, but I'm having trouble believing the results on it because it was only reading 42. Whereas, like, all my weather apps and everything, they're reading, like, 35 to 34 for the low last night for my area. Not necessarily right here, but for the area. 42 seems a bit warm, but I have one that's hanging up down there, and that's what it was reading. The other one that I have out here is over here, and I don't know, the signal died off on it. Good timing, right? <laughs> Doesn't really matter. I wasn't all that concerned. Uh, we've been doing this for so many years now, we've kind of gotten an idea for when to be alarmed about the cold with the plants and when to just be like, yeah, it's only going to be in the 30s for a few hours and then they'll be fine. The ground's still warm, got a body of water over here. There's plenty of things going on to keep them safe, but it's not like it's going to drop into the 20s. That's a whole different story. Or even 32, you know, that's, that's a lot worse than 34 or 35. But it's all about that cushion, right? So if they were forecasting... 35 for the low, then you have to go, oh, but what if they're wrong? They don't, they don't have to be off by another two or three degrees to really do a lot of damage. But I don't have that much out here that would be all that damaged from that kind of frost right now. Something I did last night that I should have done, like, I don't know, two months ago, is I started pulling some of the old, you know, the old bases off this queen palm here. That would have looked so nice if I had done that a couple of months ago. I just didn't think about it. This is as far as I got. The others... This one and this one, those pulled off no problem. Real easy, just popped right off. This one right here, still got some resistance to it. So it can hang on there and it'll fall off on its own over time. I would have liked to have kept going, but knowing that this one's giving me trouble, that means the rest of them probably would have too. That's fun. It's always nice when you start to get some more open and clear trunk on the palm trees. I can't believe how much this has grown. I'm not going to be shocked if this gets to the greenhouse and they say, um, that's not going to fit. <laughs> I mean, it should. I feel like the queen palm I had years ago, the one that I had for a long time, that got too big for the greenhouse, I feel like it was much, much, much bigger than this one. Like, I feel like it was probably this big when I got it from them. Probably. Because remember, it didn't have a lot of trunk on it, but it had a really nice compacted crown not compacted but the leaves the fronds were really tight together whereas this one's doing that stupid beanpole action that queen palms do sometimes where the fronds are really far apart and that's why the rings on the trunk are far apart there's benefits to that further apart the rings are on the trunk of a palm probably means it's a fast growing palm tree you know queens are typically fast growing but i would like for it to be more squat it's early that's why the rambling is happening i apologize i don't think there's anything left to do out here this seemed too easy. Do you know what I mean? Doesn't this all just seem like it was much less chaos than most years? I don't know why. Have I just gotten really good at this? <laughs> so it was just all routine. I mean, other than getting those Adenidias out of their containers, I just feel like it was too simple. Like I'm forgetting something, but I'm not. All the palms are out and they're ready to go. Maybe it's because I'm not digging up all the annuals around the plants. You know, like usually I go in and I have heliconias and begonias and all these things, plants underneath the bases, and I start digging, I'm going, oh, what am I going to save? I'm not, not, no, not saving any of it. Uh, I have been debating maybe pulling up <laughs> this variegated banana. I don't think that needs to go off to the greenhouse for storage, but the rest of the stuff that's in here, it'll be fine, right? If it dies, 
that's not great, but it's okay. The banana, I don't know. I just feel like that it's, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's going to come out of here easily. I'm just assuming because the root mass on this thing is already so, ow, oh my God, ow, stingy bastard. <laughs> Didn't realize that this bromeliad was one of the ones with all the little spikes on it. Thought it was a softy. Let's see if the bromeliad will come out easily. Uh, I don't know if I'd call that easily, but it did come out. Just set that over here for now. If that comes out easily, then maybe I could get in here with a garden fork for the banana. No, that just seems like a bad idea. I feel like it's going to do so much damage to it trying to get it out of here. Right? Like, what are the odds I'm really going to be able to dig this out without just destroying it? You know, bananas don't like to be moved. So, I'm just going to leave it. It'll be fine. It was in there last year. And they left it. They didn't do anything with it. They're like, oh, that's a nice banana tree. And they left it there and it came back. It's not like it did much growing this year anyways, right? <laughs> no way. It's way too freaking cold out for that. Now, I know the water's warm, but you're not getting in there. I'm not stupid, Turbo. It's a bad idea. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. I've already been on a walk. We've done our thing. We played a lot. No, 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 no. No pool. Sorry, baby. It's not happening. No way. Do not want a wet Labrador running around out here right now. It's too cold, Turbo. Sorry. It's okay. Good boy. I feel bad. I want to let him swim, but I also don't want water everywhere when it's this cold outside. You, will you go get it over there? See, sometimes... Yeah, see? Do you see what just happened there? He's like, throw me the toy. And I threw it, but not in the water. And he immediately turns... He's like, okay, you threw it. Now can I get in the water? Nah. Nah, it's too cold, Turbo. Thought it'd be nice to sit on the glider where it all started this spring, late winter was out here just looking at a barren <laughs> landscape because it's just dirt that time of year without the palm trees and the bananas and all the impatience and everything yeah last lux so nice i don't know if you can see any of it because the sun is pretty obnoxious right now steam looks kind of cool these are the days when i really start to appreciate those tropical looking more cold hardy plants like the cordelin over here nifty Good ones to have around. Take your spike plants that you put in the middle of your containers. Grow them out. Get them nice and big. They make fine house plants. They really do. They're sturdy in the house. It can be kind of a pest magnet, but I feel like that's the case for pretty much everything these days. Houseplant pests have just become so much worse than they used to be. It's almost unavoidable that you're going to have to deal with something at some point. But they just stand up, right? No matter what. You, you give them some cold, they're okay. Some drought they're okay there's really sturdy these this is what i'm talking about the australis usually labeled as indivisa not indivisa indivisa is different it doesn't branch and trunk out has a fatter leaf on it and doesn't get as big cool looking plants but this is the australis the spike plants you can keep them outside into the mid-20s they usually look pretty good as long as it's brief you know you don't want a lot of ice and snow and stuff on them you can stick them in the landscape if you want to here in now zone seven but used to be zone six when i used to do this they died down to the ground in the winter and come back up in the springtime it's just you know a bunch of tall looking grass blades so it's nothing that exciting but it's fun to have things around like that the cordelins the fetzias the akubas what else even the trio stars tremanthes surprisingly cold hardy you know i'm not worried about those at 33 degrees as long as it's brief and there's no ice snow anything like that they'll be fine it's all about how long you're going to have to wait for a warm-up. This is just a two-day cool-off, and then we're going to be back up into the upper 60s, maybe lower 70s, which isn't really warm, but it's enough to keep the plants going and keep them from rotting. Okay, you want to try again? We can do it again. Here you go. Go get it. <laughs> go get your toy. Get, I threw the toy. Go get the... Be a retriever. Go get your toy. No, no pool. Turbo, where's your toy? <laughs> 
<laughs> there we go. You retrieved. You did the thing you're supposed to do. I know, that wasn't a great throw. I'm sorry, I'm not on my game today. Just, just go do you. All right, Turbo. Okay, dog's being high maintenance today. Lots and lots and lots of energy. You can't come up here. I'm sorry, you can't come up. There's, I have things on the cushions. I'm sorry, bud, there's things on the cushions. That, and you make things really chaotic and sometimes I get motion sick when you're up here. Something I've been thinking about doing, and I think that I'm actually going to do it, is this spring, late winter, spring, that's all, those details, we'll get into those later. But the <laughs> windmill palm over here, I would really like to have some more of those. The so problem is, up here, this far north, you just don't find them that size. And the rare occasion that you do, they're like eight to $1,200, which is just insane. Absolutely crazy. It does take them a long time to get that size, especially if they've been container grown field grown they'll grow a lot faster uh, but you have to deal with the transitional period of taking a field grown plant and containerizing it which can be rough depending on what's been grown and if there's a lot of mud and clay and all that stuff around the root ball then you got to get that out of there while also not shocking the plant and killing it and getting it used to growing in soil it's a whole thing but you save a lot of money that way it's not something you could do with plants like you know like the sables like the palmettos you just buy them as a stick those have all that regeneration to do so well, i don't know what was my point there forget i said anything about the palmettos that's neither here nor there <laughs> because they, they don't come with soil around their roots you don't have to worry about regenerating the roots i guess that was kind of my thinking though was that you end up having a long wait until you get any kind of growth because all your focus needs to be on re-establishing the plant, which is similar to the palmettos. But anyways, just a few hours south of here, down in Memphis, there are several nurseries that I know of, well, several, like maybe two or three <laughs> that I know of, that sell windmill palms because a lot of people down there are growing them and they have them in larger sizes. They're still not all that cheap, but they're cheaper than they are up here, and they exist. Like up here, you usually only find them in three or five gallon containers, and that's just not gonna do it for me, right? I need something big. I want to be able to walk underneath them or for them to be kind of within that vicinity. So about maybe five feet of clear trunk, because then you imagine, you know, the pot being at least a foot tall, so that'd be six feet to the bottom of the crown. And that could get pretty pricey, and I would like. I mean, in a perfect world, I'd like to buy four or five of them, but I don't see that happening. I'd settle for two. Two would be good. If I could get four or five, that would be great. Because it would just be really nice to be able to have windmill palms in these two containers. As much as I love those Agassia palms, it's not a long-term thing, right? Same thing with the Adenidias down there. This isn't a long-term plan, being able to move them in and out, in and out, oh, what just happened, in and out of those containers brain and talking it's just not happening but i guess that's going to be the case with anything right because whatever you put in these is going to outgrow them no matter what depending on what it is palm wise i suppose if there weren't as much sun here then i could do something you know like bamboo palms chemiduria microspatics or sofritzii sofritzi sofritzii those would be able to stay in those pretty much forever but it's a totally different aesthetic <laughs> and they would fry and die in the spots that doesn't even matter but it's just nice because the windmill palms ball i don't think they have anywhere near the same tropical appeal as all these other palms do they're still really pretty they're very lush i like the dark green fan frond that they have on them and the texture on the trunk and everything it's just it's so good i love them having this plant out here for i'd say three quarters of the year it's so nice and it's easy moving them in and out if i really wanted to with this one i don't see myself doing this but i could wrap the pot in the heat cables and the trunk and everything and then just throw a big bag over it when we have cold spells i did it with the bamboo over here last winter and when i had all those things plugged in it never dropped below 19 inside these containers and that's when it was minus 12 degrees outside so that's a pretty significant level of control there right a level of protection but i just still feel like it would be really risky they grow like snails in containers might be an option though i was only thinking about that because i'm going to end up moving this over there at some point 
I'm nervous to do it because I don't want to mess up the windmill palm. Like I really want to make sure that thing's rooted in there before I start bending it down. You saw what I had to do with this thing to get it out of there. Imagine if that wasn't rooted into its pot. It would be a total disaster, right? But, but I don't have anything else I could put in that corner. And I really like having something tall in that spot. Now, it is also possible that it might still be short enough that it's going to smack people in the face when they walk through the door, but that's okay, right? Who doesn't like getting smacked around by a palm tree a little bit? Anyways, that all goes back to the cordal and, and how it's just nice having the combination of plants out here that still look fun, kind of exotic and unique, but can handle some cold, the windmill palms and the cordolins and those things. Those are what I'll be using out here once these palms are gone and filling in with some of my various yuccas and things like that to have some shape and structure out here throughout the rest of the year. Chances are a lot of it will have to go into the garage around January, but they should be fine to come back out around mid-February to March. Just, I mean, maybe, who knows? You never know what the winters are gonna be like. Should I plant a Taylor juniper in this corner? This corner, right here, right behind the crown of those bananas while holding my coffee. Let me put my, put my coffee down, hope that doesn't leak. Right in here, in this corner, outside the garden window. I think that might look kind of cool. That's something I've been thinking about for a couple years now. They don't get too wide, so that would probably work out okay as far as not blocking the view from the window and not being smashed up against the house, but it would still be, you know, really nice, just random. It would be really random though, but a big evergreen pillar that would grow up in there. I think it would get kind of lost and look out of place during the summer, but like this time of year through mid May to June, whenever it is that the bananas start to pop up and the palm trees get delivered, I think it would look kind of nice. I just, I don't know, one Taylor juniper, usually you see them planted in groups. So it'd almost be like I would need to have one right here, right there, and right there, which that's not going to happen because I have the gingers and bananas and those other spots. This is, we've just approached rambling, I think probably five minutes ago. I'm sorry. It's a garden talk. This is what I do when the palm trees start to go. Once the house plants and things are starting to be moved inside and we start to have frost, it's when the wheels start turning about what I can do for fall planting and the plans for next year. I started with the plans for next year several weeks ago because I remember like, hey, if you need to order something and grow it out throughout the winter, then you need to do that now. You can't wait until January to do that because it's too cold to ship all those plants. And some places like Plant Delights, they're not even gonna ship the plants out in January. So that's something you have to get done before they start to cease shipping plants from the places that are selling the perennials that is. And everything else, it's just, Think in time and things are on clearance right now at a lot of the nurseries so that's the other reason it's a good time to think about these things there's all those cannas back there in that corner so i don't know how that would really work i'd probably have to make a sacrifice i've been thinking about maybe pulling those cannas period though if i can find pink sunburst cannas because those are my favorite cannas the pink sunburst it's the best in my opinion they're so freaking pretty they don't get huge but I can never find them for sale. I don't understand why. I don't know if somebody bought them out. You know, sometimes people will buy out a plant and then, I mean, not like they buy out all the quantity, but they'll like buy the rights to the plant and then grow them out for several years and release them with some ridiculous name and claim it's something new. So maybe it'll come back to the market at some point with a new name or something. I don't know, but I can't find them or when I can find them, they're already sold out. So this is like the quantities on them aren't usually very large, but they stay shorter than those <laughs> musifolias that are back there. I'm not actually positive those are musifolias anymore, but I think they are just based on the spacing between the leaves, but it's, just, it's a conversation for a different time. I think I've even done a video about it, but then there should be a short row of those cannas in front of the Taylor juniper that would be just a giant green exclamation point. Speaking of exclamation point, there is, and uh, I think it's a Thuya, an Arborvitae, Arborvitae from Proven Winners that's, I think, called exclamation point, and it is a ridiculous plant. I think it only gets like 18 inches wide, but maybe even only a foot wide, and <laughs> something like 18 to 20 feet tall. They are so scrawny that they look stupid, and I think that it might be kind of fun to plant some of those back here. They wouldn't take up a lot of space, <laughs> but it would be some evergreen interest. I'm, this is what I'm talking about. I'm trying to think about the things that I could incorporate into the garden that 
aren't going to make it so that I'm, that will make it so I'm not so bummed once everything dies back and it's just brown out here, right? The heptacodium, this big shrubby tree guy over here, you can kind of see lighting so bad right now because we're looking right into the sun. That holds onto its leaves for a really long time, which is nice and it flushes back out early in the year. So it's only bare for a couple of months. And then there's a needle palm in there that's starting to get some size on it. So there's a little clump of green in there. And then of course there's the little gem magnolia, which you can't even see right now because of the bananas, but it just, I don't know, it hasn't been loving life. It's not quite cold hardy enough for that spot, I don't think. I'm gonna give it another year. I talked about digging it up in prior videos and I think it heard me and it just flushed out with lots of foliage after I said that. I'm gonna give it one more winter and see what it does, but I would really prefer like a Paris K Magnolia, similar size, but more cold hardy. And they produce flowers throughout the summertime. So you not always, but intermittently have that blast of Magnolia fragrance in the backyard. I just never see them for sale at a decent size. It's the only reason I went with the little gem because I can't usually find the Paris K unless it's from like, I don't know about fast growing trees. I don't remember where I got the two that I have. Something Brothers, Orchard Brothers. I did a whole video on them. So you can probably find if you just search Magnolia on the channel, but the, that's it for evergreens. That's what I was going to say. Otherwise it's just soil. Oh, and the Sable Miners. You can't even see them right now. Those will, <laughs> I'm going to be really glad that I have those in the ground when all this dies back, I'll be able to see those again. And then I have all the things that I was talking about, like the cordelins and some various yuccas that are in containers and things that I can pop into the ground for some winter interest. Yeah, lots of things to think about and fun things to plan, but not a lot of space. Isn't that the problem? And that always the problem, it's the space. Always need more space for plants. Huh. With the Rakuten extension getting 6% off with this thing, that's intriguing. And there's another size too. Costs more, but you still get the savings on it. Huh. Do the vents have to stay open on these? No, looks like the vents can be closed. This is, how would that stand up to the wind though? I mean, look at that. What do we think? Do you guys want me to order it? This might be worth reviewing. Hey Turbo, you gonna say hi? Turbs? Nothing? No love? Nothing's happened yet. Still got palm trees out there. And so I've been trying to think, oh, hey pumpkin. There it is, there's the measuring tape. Oh, and hi kitten, everybody's here. How you doing, ploof? These are all my final thoughts. Oh, are you coming? I hear ya, there you go can stop pouting now. He was so upset I sat down at the computer to do some editing on this video and he was acting like the world was over because we weren't outside. Anyways, I had mentioned wanting to maybe get a pop-up greenhouse, mostly so I'd have a contained space to do some bug bombing in. But the more I think about it, it oh, and that would be happening in the grow space, in the garage. Uh, I just don't know if I'm comfortable with that because the bug bombs, you know, they're really toxic. It would definitely get the job done for the pests. But I got the iguana in there and the fish. I, okay, spoke too soon. I was walking around back there and all of a sudden I looked over and there were people standing like 10 feet away from the other side of the palm trees. That was mortifying. Yeah, I know things are messy in here. It was hot. They're okay, they just need some water. It's gonna be fine. Anyways, as I was saying while I was out there, um, I don't think I want to set up a bubble in here to do the bug bombing. So I'm probably not going to do that, but I stumbled upon that hexagon for that corner is what I was thinking to cover up the sable miners and everything, which is definitely excessive, but I think it'd be fun to experiment with. I measured the 15 foot would be way too big. 9.2 might be the way to go. So that's, I've wrapped that thought up. Now I need to get back to work, which is just, I was going to water some plants in here and then I don't know. We'll go outside and wrap things up whenever the plants are gone.
Got some cleaning up to do. That's all right. I'm all for it. I love a good time cleaning. Gonna have a blast with that. Got the blower out. Power washer might be going this weekend. A little cold for that today. Yeah, there it is. They're going. I was really impressed that they were able to get that queen palm out of here with the crane. They never used the crane for that one. And I haven't understood why because it's huge and it's in a hole. But they come out and they like struggle with it and all kinds of things. I'm going to remind them of that in the spring that the crane can just barely reach over there. So it'd be worth doing that and get it positioned better too. There's the yard. See, the thing, that's why I don't get that bun about the palm trees going. It doesn't look that different to me. I, I mean, obviously it's different because the palm trees are gone and drastic change over there, but I put the windmill palm either over there or over there and move some mule palms around. It's not that different. The big impacts out here, I think, are really the bananas and all the impatience and the gingers. And uh, the palms definitely have an impact, right? But like I said, it's just not something I'm bummed over because things are still looking so good. And we still have so much gardening time left out here, at least for, you know, fall planting and prepping with perennials. Obviously not going to do anything with tropicals anymore. Anyways, yeah, thanks for hanging out. Pardon the, like, 15-minute swing time with my rambling and then the awkwardness of me coming out here to measure noise and standing right next to strangers and talking to the camera. I really freaked out over that. But uh, it all worked out. Everything's gone. They did a good job. Things are relatively clean considering what happened over here. That mess is from me. I did that. And uh, now I can blow things and clean up because I was able to, or had to, move the table over to make some more room for everybody. I don't think the croton's going to stay right there, but it was just bugging me having a giant hole in the ground. I had to put something in the hole. And what better to stick in the hole than a croton? Who doesn't love a nice, bright, vibrant, big, colorful bush in the ground? Looks nice. I also went ahead and watered. I haven't watered because I didn't want things to be all wet and muddy out here while they were doing their thing, but you can see what that did. Things got kind of thirsty. They'll be okay. They'll perk up. All right. Thanks for hanging out. Like I said, I think I already said that. Comment down below. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. I'm pumped because now the creative juices and wheels are spinning for maybe testing out some cheap, inexpensive pop-up type greenhouses. I have a couple others and a shopping cart that I might try out for the garden this year. And if you have any suggestions, let me know. Put them down in the comments. Don't post the link. Just put the name of it. Links don't stick around. They get sent off to spam. All right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. Bye.